in the drama the bear uh, written by the playwright Anton Chekhov uh, we discussed a uh, few major themes the first one is fidelity versus infidelity second one is inconsistency uh, between the two characters and the theme of money and emancipation of women and uh, uh, we talk about the condition of women condition of women uh, uh, in the Russian society. So we able to put in all, we know that uh, uh, the the bear is a drama that that relates about the uh, Russian so previous Russian society which prevailed uh, the, uh, after the fifth industrial revolution and uh, the translator of this, uh, who converted this into the English is Julius West. Uh, so here, uh, there are only five major themes that we can discuss upon this. And you know that the, the bear is a farce, uh, which, uh, which means that this drama uh, creates much sarcasm among the audience. And uh, there are two major characters in this drama. The, actually, there are three major, but the mainly we discussed about the uh, characteristics relating to um, Popova, a widow, a lady, and a person named Smirno. Smirno is the cause for this conflict, um, and uh, Popova's servant is called Luca. He's a, 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 a old footman uh, who helps in Popova in the household work. So. Uh, so the setting of this uh, the drama bear uh, discusses about the pre-revolutionary Russia. Uh, so the two major characters representing the drama bear belong to the ancient, uh, not ancient actually, uh, the landlord society, or the feudal landlord society that prevailed in Russia. So there are a few literary techniques that we ought to discuss uh, in this drama there. Uh, we can discuss mainly about the humor or the uh, sarcasm and the element of metaphor uh, and the uh, incongruity of the contrasting uh, character traits between the two major characters, Popoa and Smirno. And then, And uh, there's another literary technique that is the suspense. So everywhere, like not everywhere, in certain situations, with the audience uh, feels like what's going to happen next. And uh, the suspense is created among the audience. And uh, it will fall down into the laptop. Okay. So the major element here is the creating sarcasm among the two characters. Here, mm, here the poor character of Popova creates a sarcasm and she has also the element of fidelity and infidelity. So everywhere we can see that these two characters uh, create inconsistency that means uh, there are change uh, every time the human mind tends to change uh, that means uh, in certain situations they change their decisions time to time um, when we discuss this uh, drama short in brief first uh, the, the in the exposition in the exposition of the drama uh, we see that uh, in the exposition of the drama, we have uh, two characters, uh, Popo and Luca. Uh, <laughs> 
two characters, Luca and Popova. Um, there, uh, first of all, like we see that Popova is in a condition of mourning stage. So the reason for this is that uh, it's been just seven months uh, after the death of her uh, husband. Uh, which means that after the death of the husband, she's reminding over it again and again. So uh, she is like in a very uh, sad situation. Actually, it's because she loves him very much, and uh, uh, she she is worrying about the death of her husband. And it's been exactly seven months after the death of her husband. So now here the Luke appears, and Luca feels rather sympathetic and sorry towards Popoa. So she says he if Luca is a he and he's old footman, uh, he mentions Popoa that why are you staying like this? There's no point of leading a life like this. And the quotations that represent that uh, Popoa should uh, get rid of this kind of a lifestyle is that uh, um, then Popoa mentions to Luca that I shall never go out and why should I? My life is already at an end. He is in his grave and I buried myself between four walls. So what's the point of being buried between four walls? Just because the husband died. She can go outside, have, can talk with other people, the villagers. So she says that we are both dead. So that's the major reason that she is going to show her fidelity by mentioning that she is going to be locked up. Fidelity that uh, she is going to be locked up between four walls. So her husband's name is Nikolai Mikhailovich. Um, he's dead at the moment. So she goes and weeping, wearing and mourning and grieving um, of him. So in response for her statements of these kinds, uh, the Luca says, uh, my old woman died too when her time came. Well, I grieved over her. I wept for a month and that's enough for her. But if I've got to weep for a whole age, well, the old women isn't worth it. But you got, uh, but um, the, then the Lucas says, but you've forgotten all your neighbors. So what's the point of that? Not going out and not having a nice talk with other people. And, and further, uh, he mentions that we live, so to speak, like spiders and never see the light. The mice have eaten my livery. And... Uh, so the, we can see that there are certain instances where the element of uh, sarcasm or fun, sarcasm is created, uh, we will write the quotations that are relevant, that there are many questions relating to sarcasm or the fun, creating fun among the audience, so that's the main uh, objective, I think could be the main objective for like, the uh, dramatist uh, to create, like to make the audience feel happy. So. In the past, uh, the sarcasm element of sarcasm is created, and uh, there are examples of quotations that predict the sarcasm. That is, uh, the first one is, I buried myself between four walls. So that's the uh, that's sarcasm. Why four walls? Burying herself within, burying between four walls. Then, uh, then she says, uh, my old woman died too, but uh, uh, um, I wept for a month, but that's enough for her. Uh, Luca's old woman died too, but that's enough for her. That's enough, because uh, she isn't worth the... Uh, because the old women isn't worth it, isn't worth it. So that's rather sarcastic. And the third point is that uh, he like uh, uh, mentions like in a in rather metaphorically he mentions that uh, for Popo are not going outside. He mentions we live so to speak like spiders, never see the light. So that also creates sarcasm under Popo's character. Uh, we live. So to speak and never see the light. Mice have eaten my liver. 
So th- this is the third. This could be taken as the third example, which creates sarcasm. So and in, again, he mentions that if she doesn't go out, if she isn't going to, um, if she isn't going to like. Uh, mm, uh, like if she, isn't, if she isn't going to out and have a talk with the rest of the other people then in uh, Luca like sarcastical emotions may, in 10 years time you have to be a peahen for yourself a month of years because when she grows older she won't uh, she won't have that same beauty with her like uh, she'll be like cornered in the society because she's old uh, like the uh, factors relating to all the they may appear like re, there may be wrinkles and when she go or go old that no man would come uh, towards her so then like sarcastically he mentioned <coughs> in 10 years time uh, you'll want to be a be him for yourself among officers this is the fourth example under the uh, element of sarcasm and because the ulterior motive of this drama is to create sarcasm on the audience then only the audience will be enthusiastic enough to enjoy this drama so enjoyment comes okay. and uh, uh, now like we know that uh, Popo is now at the moment she is showing her determination towards fidelity. Fidelity. She was showing uh, fidelity. So uh, afterwards uh, now she is like weeping, mourning, you know, my husband died, my life is at the end too. So what should I do like that? So after that may she messes. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I know it's no secret to you that he was often unfair to now her mind or attitude changes suddenly. She says now her husband was a very good one, I love him very much and now she says she, he was often unfair to me. Her mind suddenly changes, that is the inconsistency. She talks the good things as well as the bad things, the hypocritic nature. Uh, I know it's no secret to you that he was often unfair to me, cruel to me and even unfaithful. So we can see that the, her husband was a unfaithful uh, character that we proven to be in infidelity, rather in, uh, consistent of infidelity, rather uh, than Popoa's character. Infidelity. Infidelity. So, uh, yeah. And uh, after this, uh, it's quite interesting to see, uh, like, uh, now she is now imagining the nature of her husband while he was living, and she mentions that. Uh, like uh, now, uh, uh, now Luca mentions here in the next situation that uh, my lady, you can have a walk in the garden or have a look upon the Toby, the horse, the giant horse, and uh, you can drive up to see some neighbors. But uh, Popoa says, uh, uh, then Popoa suddenly the, her mind like gets like holds up to her husband's previous like way of uh, behaving, like uh, not actually behaving. She can like she, uh, she recalls her husband's uh, activities, how he was when he when they lived together. So, um, so uh, Popo suddenly weeps, oh, like that, because now she's recalling her husband's uh, um, husband's uh, what he did. Then he what she says as a result is that he was so fond of Toby. Uh, he used to always ride on him to the Portuguese and Blaslows. How well he could ride now? She's imagining uh, how his husband uh, rode on that uh, ho- rode on the uh, on the back of Toby. So, what drive there was in his figures uh, when he figure when he pulled at the reins with all his strength. Do you remember Toby? Toby, tell them to give him an extra feed of force just because that husband. Uh, she imagines uh, how her husband used to ride on the Toby. Uh, but just by hearing the word Toby, she recalls it and tells the servant uh, to give some extra words to Toby. That's rather silly. Just because the husband wrote, uh, husband loved Toby very much, uh, in 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 like uh, in relevant to that uh, statement, uh, she mentions. Then only she is reminded that uh, she should give some extra words to Toby. So that's rather funny, ridiculous. But it's not the element that creates much of a sarcasm. So that's fine. Uh, so uh, now, now the next situation is the situation where 
the instance where a smirno appears a strange appears and he knocks on the door and uh, luca says um, uh, the bell rings noisily and coco says who's that tell them that i receive nobody so she is in determination to not to receive anybody so coco another character coco is that uh, uh, she has this uh, fi- fidelity fidelity uh, faith also called faith or the uh, she has good inconsistency uh, she even has got the determination determination uh she has the um, uh, determination power uh, power and everything courage she's got the courage and everything same same meaning and uh, and also uh yeah so luca says yes madam now she is uh, asking luca to see who it is and tell them that she is not going to receive anybody so she is in determination no i'm not going to receive anybody because i am showing my faith towards my husband and uh, due to that reason i won't see or receive anybody so now when my luca is engaging with that purpose of like whether to know who who has arrived at that moment popo is looking at the photograph of her husband now uh, there's a portrait hanging on the wall and she is looking at it and uh, you will see nicolas how how i can love and forgive my love will die out with me only when this poor heart will cease to be now that's just this statement she mentions and she laughs through her tears now she is crying and she is laughing as if so aren't you ashamed i am a good and virtuous little wife i will lock myself in and will be true to you till the grave and you aren't you ashamed you bad child you deceived me had drove with me left me alone for weeks on end so uh so that's also uh mm, that that shows her uh inconsistency now she was like weeping more than why on the heck does she wish to weep for more no her husband if he had done if he was so unfaithful to her so that's that's a good uh, quotation which uh, they use uh, this can also be prone to be showing sarcasm um uh, like uh, uh you deceive me uh uh aren't you ashamed you bad child and you uh, but uh, it doesn't exactly create sarcasm do but it instead it creates the inconsistency or the incongruity and uh, we are we seeing these two characters uh, is the suspense uh, we can take another theme uh, suspense suspense now the to like or the audience is like thinking what's going to happen next oh wow like this is a nice ending they always expect a beautiful nice ending uh, and uh, now afterwards i said that uh, now she is uh, showing her incongruity telling that you deceived me had rose with me left me alone for weeks so then and these statements clearly prove that the husband the dead husband nikolai mihailovich was an unfaith- unfaithful uh, character towards her uh, wife So then Luca comes in the next instance and asks, "Madam, somebody is asking for you. Uh, he wants. He says that he wants to see you." Then Popoa says, "Didn't you tell him that I won't receive anybody? But that he Luca mentioned that the person is forcing himself in. So how can I? But he even to me, he says that it's a very pressing affair." Then Popoa says, "I do not receive you. This shows a firm determination on receiving nobody into my house. I'm not going to take anyone." so she is very determined i'm not going to take anyone kill it pass say the lucas is the dead devil devil curses and pushes himself right in me he is in the dining room now it was a popo is now really angry now with this this, this who the heck is this coming inside forcefully without even any manners it pass say popo is asking very well ask him in what manners appa she says then how these people annoy me what does he want of me why should he disturb my peace kina then uh, then uh, no i shall the i see that i shall yeah then uh, no i see that i shall have to go into a convent after all so this is the situation that happens when smerno is like this is the situation where smerno is entering into the uh, like the may the this uh, uh, situation so then smerno comes 
um, Benzema no mentions. You fool! You are too fond of talking as Usmo no shouts out. Sees Popo. He suddenly sees Popo and shows respect to her. Uh, speaks with respect, Madam. Now he is at the moment he is showing his good behavior. But thing is, he has come to for a very present affair. Now he cannot ignore it because it is something very may important for him because we'll see that in the next instance madam i have the honor to present myself i am grigory stepnowitz mano a landowner a retired lieutenant of uh, artillery i am compelled to disturb you on a very pressing affair so popua not giving her hand uh, she says what do you want and she says your late husband with whom i had uh, the honor of being acquainted died in my debt for one thousand two hundred rubles on two bills of exchange, as I have good to pay the interest on a mortgage, mortgage, mortgage tomorrow, mortgage tomorrow, I have come to ask you, madam, to pay me the money today. Papa says one thousand two hundred. Hmm. And uh, what was my husband in debt to you for? Uh, then Sveno says that uh, he used to buy oats for from me. And then Popo again signed. Now she can again imagine her husband, the way his husband uh, went on Toby. And now this also for Toby, the host. Uh, again, she is again uh, th thinking of her husband and she signed now. Um, she is rather depressed now again because he's remind she's reminded of her late husband. So Popo says, so don't you forget Luca to give Toby an extra feed of force. Again she shouts out. Luca give uh, Toby an extra feed of force again for the second time. Because now every time she is reminded, whenever she is reminded of her husband in order to show the faith, uh, she shouts out, give him an extra feed of force. Then uh, Luca exits. If Nikolai, then Papua mentions again, if Nikolai Mihailovich died in debt to you, then I shall certainly pay you. But after, but after tomorrow my steward will be back from the town and I'll give you him instructions to settle your account but at the moment I cannot do as you say moreover it's exactly seven months since the death of my husband and I'm in a state of mind which absolutely prevent me giving any money attentions my attention so now Smirno is shocked hearing this because it's very urgent he needs the money exactly tomorrow and uh, so it's a terrible situation now. So this arrives, this later results in a conflict. So another major theme is that there's a conflict arising. Argumental based conflict arises between the two characters from this point on as and when they, when the uh, at the time when the from the time when the proposer refuses to pay the money today says I will pay but not today. I can't give it today itself, but you'll have to wait till the day after tomorrow. So Smarno says, and I am in a state of mind which if I don't pay the interest due tomorrow, will force to make me a graceful exit from the light feet first. Then take my stay. So that's really pathetic for Smarno. He needs the money so unbearably he is in need of the money. So under the situation, sarcasm is left with today's so-called state of mind. State of mind. So the Smirno highly criticizes this state of mind. And uh, uh, then Papua again says, you will have the money day after tomorrow. The Papua says, I don't want the money the day after tomorrow, I want it today. So that's a conflict arising. They are arguing, arguing on the same opinion. They, he says, uh, he wants the money today itself. She says she can't pay the money. She has to put any solution to pay the money today itself. Then Papua says, you must excuse me, I can't pay you. And Smirno says, I can't wait till after tomorrow. Then Popo says, well, what can I do if I haven't got the money now? Do you mean to say you can't pay me? Uh, I can't. And then this is the dialogue going on. Then, then Smirno says, thank you so much. I'll make a note of it. And he's really angry now. Really angry in the sense uh, he's in the he's in the circumstance of uh, getting really angry. Uh, but not very angry, but he's coming to the verge of it. How on earth am I not to get angry? I want the money desperately. I wrote out yesterday early in the morning. Now he says his journey towards the, for arriving here after going to several debtors and everyone refusing to pay him the pay him uh, refusing to pay him money back. 
and uh, uh, and he was like totally abandoned he didn't have a place to spend the night itself because everyone refused then he goes to other house uh, these all people who whom he had given money previously they all refused to pay him back and now at last he came to this place what the heck did this this lady is in a so called state of mind and is not willing to pay the money to date itself and after having traveled so much and in a dirty uh, suit and everything now he is totally upset very angry that he he says that he can turn the whole globe into dust that he is so very angry and uh, and that's what he mentions here uh, and called all on all my debtors and not a single one of them paid up i was just about dead beat after all slept godness knows where in some inn kept by jew with the vodka barrel by my head at last i get here 70 west from home west in the sense some unit that uh, the russians measured the distance uh, from place to place and i hope to get something at least something and i am received by you with the state of mind How shouldn't I get angry? We feel really sympathetic towards Mano in this situation because he is in the verge of some big problem. Like tomorrow, the bank will totally get his state, and he'll be left with nothing because he needs the money at the moment. Day after tomorrow, there will be no use of paying him the money back because he is needing it today. So, so Popua is we feel that sympathy towards Popua as well. Popua being. But Popua could go out and get the money, though she doesn't need this steward to actually. She is not that old enough. She is a young lady. She can do something to help this man. So we'll see what will happen. So Popua thought I distinctly said my steward will pay you when he returns from the town. Then I didn't come to your steward, but to you. What the devil lexus my saints? So so have I to do with your steward? So that was very like impolite, and this no matter that's not the, actually with the sheer anger. This is the way that Smirno speaks out. So his impoliteness is shown here. Then Popo says, "Excuse me, sir. I am not accustomed to listen to such expressions or to such a tone of voice, and I want to hear no more." So Popo's determination is again. Um, proved her courage shouting at a man that you should be disciplined when talking to someone and uh, i'm not accustomed to listen to such a voice like harsh voice i i i want to hear no more and then she makes a rapid exit exit so smirno says again well there a state of mind husband died now he is speaking with anger so he is uh, he is rather we making sarcastic opinions towards popova he he criticizes popova because uh, he says he he thinks that he's been beat beat treated by popova and he says he does she because she's mentioning that he doesn't have any manners so to speak to person but he popova is unaware of the real tension of this uh, smirno so mustn't i must i pay the interest or mustn't i i ask you must i pay or mustn't i not Suppose your husband is dead, and you got this state of mind and nonsense of that sort, and your steward's gone away somewhere. They will take him. What do you want me to do? Do you think I can fly away from my creditors in a balloon or what? Or do you expect me to go out, run my head into a brick wall? Or I go to Grudge when he isn't at home? Now he's mentioning about the characters, the people whom he had been indebted to, and um, uh, he visits all those places. And at last he came here. The same thing I mentioned, and he. personally mentions uh, each and every character that whom uh, he has be, ha, who that has been indebted to him so i go to grudge when he is not at home yasarovich has hidden himself and i had a violent row with protisin and nearly threw him out of the window mazuko has something the matter with these bubbles and this woman has something in state of mind so these all are sarcastic like no that uh, much i hit the cc she anger and he's mentioning all the characters whom he went and wanted to get something out of them but they all have done something like that had made uh, smirno really angry or oh, really in a terrible situation again like the characters that gajjo has is in that home yes sir which has hidden himself i had a violent row with prosetina nearly threw him out of the window masogo has something the matter with his bowels and this woman has something in state of mind so what the nonsense are this and not one of the swine wants the swine is the uh, the 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 is the slang language but uh, he is in the terrible sheer anger so that's why he is uh, saying all this in front of popova because 
that's the the he's in a real need that's why we should understand people's needs and act accordingly so i wants to pay me just because i'm too gentle with them because i'm rag i just weak wax in their hands i'm much too gentle with them well just you wait you will find out what time like i shan't let you play about with me confound it i shall jolly well stay here until she pays brr like this how angry i am today how angry i am all my inside is quivering with anger and i can't even breathe oh my word i even feel sick this this he is like totally busted now no he really needs the money that's why he's shouting like this in front of popoa and popoa won't stay calm and listen to all this she is also saying this stuff that that would make uh, smirno totally betrayed they are betrayed towards each other now um smirno is to shout in bargain in uh, at popoa now so popoa is since you know the popoa is a character with a firm determination as well so he shouts again wait uh, the luca what is it luca says give me some glass of water he is totally gone out of nuts now uh, what a way to reason a man in desperate need of his money and she won't pay it because this she cannot dis- to dispose any to attend any money matters that's real silly feminine logic he is now he is betraying popoa and is totally condemning popoa at this moment and that's why i never did like and don't like now to have to talk to women i drag the sit on a barrel of gunpowder than talk to men so another point where sarcasm is depicted is that i drag talk to um, i drag sit on a sit on a, a barrel of of gunpowder than talk to women and uh, uh brr it's quite chilly inside that's all on account of that little bit of fluff <laughs> so is the way he is speaking is really funny but poor popo as well she has done nothing to do because the steward has gone out and uh, we know the situation now this is a real conflict now this has arisen to a conflict now we'll see what will happen in the next sense and i can't even see one of these poetic creatures from a distance without breaking out into the cold sweat out of the sheer anger i can't look at them now luca enters with water now because uh, he previously asked for some glass of water the luca said now now here Popoa is not in the scene. She went out. She she made a graceful exit out of the situation. Now this man is speaking to himself. Now he shouted to himself because he is. We know that any person who is unable to fulfill his wish of a of a such a big matter like estate is a big thing. Once he gets lost of his estate, his demand is totally ruined. So, um, so Luke comments that Madam is still ill and will see nobody. Now. Popo is really shocked and ashamed. She can hear this shouting as well, and now she is worried, me angry as well, in tension and all of this. So now Ismerno says, "Get out of my sight. You have nothing to do with the, my business here." Then ill and you see nobody now. Ismerno is again shouting now. He is totally out of his world with the she anger. He says that because he is too gentle with his debt creditors, that's why they won't pay him. If he was to, if he had become too like uh, responsible with his money matters, they would have given the money, been strict to them and like that. Because he was too gentle with them, he says that's why they they run they run he and they are knowing that he'll be coming today to collect the money. So. Uh, some of this lady she is doing in everything now her his last hope was to get something from this popova but she is also ignoring him so um, no it's all right you don't see me right i am going to stay and will sit here till you give me the money you can be ill for a week and uh, uh, we a uh, week if you like but i'll stay here for a week but it's really stupid at least stupid it because Tomorrow the state will be going to the bank, and if he if he continues staying for a week, what's the point of getting the money after a week? Because it's today he needs the money. So now it's uh, you can be ill for a week, whether fake or truly. I'll be here for a week. If we're ill for a year, I'll stay for a year. I'm going to get my own, my dear. I don't get at me with your widow's weeds and your dimple cheeks, and I know those dimples. And all in the Russian society, they knew very well that the very ladies with the dimple cheeks—they were very cunning, and they used to handle situations in a tricky manner. 
So like that, we will in our countries we have got that, and then the Simon take them out. We are going away at one time, staying here. And he continues to stay here. Then Popo will do something. No, that she's she's in a state of mind. She needs the peace, the quiet, the calmness, and everything. And this stupid person is coming, not stupid actually. The who is in need of the money. If she wants to make him go out, she have to do something to pay she, the debt off. She has to. Yeah, she she's she's has she's got to pay the money today so that's why he's going to stay like this for shouting 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 so i'm staying here tell them at this table to give the horses the moats and you fall you let the near horses get, get tied up with the reins again you know he's shouting yes in a stupid manner never mind i'll tell it to you never mind uh, this quotation they won't be useful so oh it's bad the heat's prideful nobody pays up now he's just saying to himself, oh, it's bad. The heat's frightful. Nobody pays up. I slept badly. Now he's had a long distance. Was very tired. No food. No what? Like he's he he said he could he's unable to get his intention done. Like he's uh, well done properly. So on top of everything, he has a bit of fluff early in the morning with the state of mind. My head's aching. Shall I have some vodka? What please? I think I will. Again he shouts, wait, uh, right there. No, because it's what he says. A glass of vodka. Oh, I must say, I look well, dust all over, boots dirty, unwashed, unkempt, straw on my waistcoat. The dear lady may, may have well taken me for a brigand. That's really sarcastic. Um, but uh, it's not like that's what he mentions, so it's not. Absolutely, it's not. It doesn't evoke sarcasm. Uh, the dear lady may have taken me for brigand, and it's rather impolite to come into a drawing room in this state. But it, it cannot be helped. I am not here as a visitor, but as a creditor, and there is no specially prescribed dress for creditors. And then Luca enters with the vodka. You allow yourself go very fast. Sir. Now Luca is also now. Uh, like uh, have had enough of this man and he also wants to tell this man to go away go and come again late tomorrow uh, day after tomorrow and get the money and uh, Smano says angrily what what did you say then Smano, Luca says uh, nothing nothing I really because he's an old man and Smano is a well built uh, yeah, not young yeah, actually middle aged man and Smano says whom are you talking to shut up he says now he's angry you know? so Luca should mind his own business and the de Luca says silently while going out, he mentioned the devils come to stay. Bad luck that brought him in. Yeah, he is, Luca is thinking. Uh, Popo is not here at the moment. She is still inside her room and uh, she will come here again. And she is coming now. Uh, again he shouts, wait uh, for the third time now. Wait. Uh, and Popo comes, uh, chokes in her eyes downwards. Sir, now she is coming to the scene with Smero. Sir, in my solitude, I have grown unaccustomed to the masculine voice and I can't stand shouting. I must ask you not to disturb my peace. So this statement, in my solitude, I have grown unaccustomed to masculine voice could be taken as an example that predicts that from what uh, the purpose character of determination or courage. She is without any fear. She says, excuse me, sir, I am not used to this sort of a masculine voice. So please go. And I can't stand shouting, she's mentioned. Because uh, she's, she's a female and she, has got, she hasn't got the, such a power to shout at him. So Smyrno says, pay me the money and I'll go. Then Popo says, I told you playing perfectly and I haven't any money to spare. Wait until the day after tomorrow. And Smyrno says, says, I told you perfectly plainly that I don't want the money today. Mon money day after tomorrow, but today. And if you don't pay me today, I'll have to hand myself tomorrow. Popo says, but what can I do if I haven't got the money? You are so strange. Smano says, then you won't pay me now. Huh? I can't. In that case, I'll stay here and sh wait, sh wait until tomorrow until I get it. You are going to pay me the day after tomorrow, right? Okay, very well. I'll stay here until the day after tomorrow and I'll sit here all the time. Now, he jumps up again and... Uh, have I got to pay the interest tomorrow? Haven't I? He's questioning her again with anger because, oh, do I think, do you think that I'm, going, I'm doing this just for a joke or something? Then Papua says, please don't shout. This isn't a stable. 
I want some task in your bottom is stable, but I whether I but whether I go to inter pay my interest tomorrow or not. Then Bhopua says, you don't know how to behave before women. So again she says that now Bhopua is now coming to the argument now little by little after the whole thin whole script that the Smirno mentioned before. Now Bhopua is going to criticize uh, Smirno like. Uh, uh, based on uh, Smirno, uh, the way that uh, when the, the time when she couldn't tolerate any longer, this Smirno shouting and bargaining and she couldn't withstand her anger anymore. So Smirno says, no, I don't know how to, you know, I don't, I, then Smirno says, no, I don't know how to behave before women. Then Popo says, no, you don't, you are rude, ill-bred man. Now Popo Smirno thinks, oh, she is coming to criticize me. Huh? Okay, we'll see what we'll now. Now the conflict is not related to the money, but now it turns into something else, like equality of sexes. No, like uh, condemning each, the man is better or the le, me, 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 female is better. So now that's the conflict now, not the money matter. Uh, so... Uh, now she says, the ill-bred man, rude man, how come you speak to a woman like this? This man says, what a business? How do you want me to talk to you? In French or in what? Then uh, he loses his temper and uh, lisps and, Madam, J. Woe's pray. How happy I am that you don't pay me. Ah, pardon, I have disturbed you. Such lovely weather today. And how well you look in the morning. And he mentions like that. And Popo says, that's silly and rude. Then uh, <laughs> he is criticizing Popoa to the very best. <laughs> so Popoa is Smirno is teasing her. Huh? Uh, so that that too she was a bit of laughter. And uh, Isbono says, silly and rude. I don't know how to behave before women. Madam, in my time, I have seen more women than you seen sparrows. So that evokes laughter. I am seeing more sparrows. Seeing more women than you see sparrows. And uh, I refused 12 women and 9 have refused me. Yes, that was a, that was a time when I played the fool. Centered myself, used honeyed words wore jewellery, made beautiful bows, and I used to love, to suffer, to sign at the moon, to get the sour, to thaw, to freeze. I used to love passionately, madly, and uh, very every place way they will take me. I used to chatter like a magpie about emancipation. I wasted half of my life wealth on tender feelings, but now you must excuse me. You won't get around with me like that now. Uh, Black eyes, passionate eyes, ruby lips, dimpled lay cheeks, uh, whispers, timid breathing. I wouldn't give a brass farthing for a lot, madam. Present company always accepted. All women, great or little, are insincere, cruel, backbiters, envious, liars to the marrow of their bones, vain, trivial, merciless, un trivial, unreasonable, as far as this is concerned. He taps his forehead. Excuse my outspokenness. A sparrow can give you 10 points to any philosopher in petty course to its like to name. You look at one of these poetic creatures, all muslin, eternal demigoddess, and you have a million transports of joys. You lick into her soul and see a common crocodile. This is totally sarcastic, but um, sarcastic, and this is a total criticism towards Popoa and all the women in general. So, the most disgusting thing of all is that this crocodile for some reason or no other imagines that if chefs do or he's speaking in French as well, and privilege and monopoly is its tender feelings. Why confound it? Hang me on that nail feet upwards if you like, but have you met a woman who can love anybody except a lap dog? When she's in love, she can do anything but snivel and slobber, while a man is snuffering and making sacrifices. All her love expresses itself in her playing about with the scarf and trying to hook him more firmly by the nose. You have the misfortune to be a woman. You know from yourself what's the nature of women. Tell me truthfully, have you ever seen a woman who was sincere, faithful, constant? You haven't. Only freaks and all women are faithful and constant. You will meet a cat with the horn or a woodcock sooner than a <coughs> constant woman.
So that that's the total criticism. Like Smirno is totally criticizing the women in general, including Popova. So Popova then says, then according to you, who is faithful and constant in love? Is it the man? Now the, that problem is gone now. The money matter is not included in here. Then Smirno shouts, yes, it's the man. Then the man, the Popova shouts, men are faithful and constant in love. What an idea. Now she starts her dialogue. What right have you to talk like that? Men are faithful and constant. Since we are talking about it, I tell you that all of the men I have knew and known, the best was my late husband. I loved him passionately with all my being, and as only a young and imaginative woman can love, I gave him my youth, my happiness, my life, my fortune. I breathed him, uh, I worshipped him as if I were hidden, and but then this best of men shamelessly deceived me at every step. After his death, I found his death full of drove a full of love letters and that's when he was alive it was an awful thing to remember he used to leave me alone for weeks on end and at a time make love to other women and he betrayed me before my very eyes and he wasted my money made fun of my feelings and in spite of all of that i loved him and was true to him and not only that but now that he is dead i'm still true and constant in love to his memory I shall shut myself within four walls and will wear this piece to very end. Now this is really sarcastic but this shows her inconsistency and incongruity. She at the beginning she was showing her faith and now she is expressing the ill behavior of his husband to a stranger. Like this is so personal that you can't shout a family problem like that to a person whom she doesn't know, whom she is not aware of even. So now she is going to be betrayed by this statement as well. Now she, is, uh, she says that even though he was so unfaithful, all these statements are showing that Nikolai was a very unfaithful person towards his wife. But she, to the very end, is going to mourn and wear um, of the death of her husband. So that's really ridiculous. So Smirno knows the the his real meaning of what she mentions that she is just going to show off to the society because it's a tradition that prevailed in ancient Russia so to show the faith when someone dies especially the husband or wife dies one has to show the faith but uh, this is not the true faith actually this is a totally showing off kind of a show off so uh, Smirno again says weeps I don't understand what you take me for. As if don't know why you wear that black domino and bury yourself between four walls. I should say I did so mysterious, so poetic. When some junker or some tame poet goes past your window, he'll think there lives a mysterious Tamara who for the love of her husband buried herself between four walls. We know these games now. So Papua explodes now. What? How dare you say such a thing? Love that to me. You may have buried yourself alive, but you haven't forgotten to powder your face. And um, the Tamara scene, you can take that the tame poet, tame poet, and uh, uh, mysterious Tamara. And other instances are uh, haven't. To powder your face. How dare you speak to me like that? Papa says. Then Smyrna says, Please don't shout. I'm not too stupid. You must allow me to call things by their real names. I'm not a woman and I'm used to saying what I think straight out. Don't you shout either. Papa says, I'm not shouting, it's you. Please leave me alone. Smino says, pay me my money and I'll go. The Papa says, I shan't give you any money. Papa says, Smino says, oh no, you will. I shan't give you a farthing just to spite you, you leave me alone. So another scene uh, that creates sarcasm is the instance where I have not the pleasure, I have not pleasure being your husband or friends, 
don't make scenes. Don't make scenes. That's what he says in Papua says, I shan't give you a bad farthing, but just to spite you and you leave me alone. I don't like it, Smirno says. Papua says, so you sit down. Talking with Ray now, she is totally fed up of this man. He is always criticizing her. Everything is granted for silly and sarcasm, and her tender feelings are also granted for sarcasm. And Smirno says, "Give me my money." Then how angry I am! How angry I am! And Papua says, "I don't want to talk to his impudent scoundrels." Uh, her confidence is shown by uh, I don't want to talk to impudent scoundrels. Impudent. And and uh, aren't you going? No. And uh, Luke approaches. Would you mind going out, sir? As you ask, you needn't. Then Smirno jumps up and shut up. Who are you talking to? I'll chop you into pieces. I'll chop you into pieces. Who does like? Who does he think of him, himself? To chop into pieces, a person uh, that uh, how can how come he chop a person into pieces? I chop you into pieces. That's really sarcastic. He has no right to say a such a thing to a person like that. Then Luca says, "Little fathers, what people? Oh, I mean, now Luca turns ill and." Papua says, where's Dasha, where's Palagia, where's Dasha? She shouts up, no one comes out. And then Luca says, oh, they all going to pick fruit in the forest and I, there's nobody at home and I'm ill and I need water. Papua is really angry because everything is going to get turned out into a mess. Her furniture is broken, wherever it's Mano sees the chair, one chair, one foot broke and table broke and uh, things broke out. And... Uh, and now uh, the people are not there. Luca is turning near. She needs water. And it's really pathetic now. Uh, so this could be turned into the climax. Near into the climax or something. So then Smeno says, can't you be more polite? The Papua is now is turning. Like she clenches her fist and stamps her foot. Says, you are a bow. A coarse bear. A baboon. A monster. The, these all terms are funny. A bear. Baboon, monster, all these create a sarcastic feeling. And uh, Smino says, What did you say? I said, You are a bear, a monster. Now, I suppose, uh, and suppose I'm insulted, you do you think I'm afraid of you? Now, this creates uh, Papua's determination and courage and confidence in, in showing up to a stranger. So then he she thinks, uh, Just because I'm insulting you, do you think I'm afraid of you? Ah, like then Smirno says, and do you think just because you are a poetic creature, you can insult me with impunity? Eh, we'll fight it out. Luca says, little fathers, but people, I need some water. Now Smirno says, pistols. Papa, do you think I'm afraid of you? Just because you have a large face, that also creates sarcasm. You have a large fist and a bull's throat. That creates her sarcasm. She is uh, showing her courage, but the way she expresses it quite sarcastic. I'm afraid just because you have a large fist and a bull's throat and you baboon, then Smirno says, We'll fight it out. I'm going, not going to be insulted by anybody. So here, Smirno's problem is that the reason why he's arguing so much is that he thinks that he's been insulted by Popova. And then Popova thinks that she's been insulted by. Smirno. So two of them have gone nuts with the both of the attitudes, both of their way of expressing idea. So I don't care if you are a woman, one of the softer sex in the um, then Popo shouts, Bear, bear, bear. She shouts out with the interrupting him. He doesn't want to carry on with his insultations towards her, so she in, tries to interrupt him saying bear bear bear. Uh, it's, uh, it's about time we get rid of this prejudice and only men need to pay for the insults. They will take it. If you want equality of rights, you can have it. We are going to fight it out. Papa says with pistol, this shows uh, strength, power, power and determination is so constant. When she says, okay, she agrees with the challenge presented by Ismano. She says with pistols, very well. 
this very minute then this very minute she totally agrees with him she doesn't uh, says that she is scared or she is a lady fe female but uh, it turns out to be something really sarcastic she says that my dead husband had some pistols and i'll bring them here but let's say it will give me to put the bullet into your thick head they will take you this man says i'll bring her down like a chicken and i'm not a little boy or a sentimental puppy that sounds really sarcastic the poor this man mentions that uh, ಪಾಪಿಮೆಂಟಲ್ ಪಾಪಿ these scenes of smano and popoa create sarcasm sarcasm <laughs> my place to give me to put the bullet into the head and this man said okay i'll bring her down like a chicken and i'm not a little boy you're a sentimental puppy i don't care of this soccer sex the look says please his little father that servant he still no one is there to look for look for him these two are in another world they are in the mid middle of a conflict and <laughs> then have pity on a poor old man and he's also shouting and go away from me you frighten her to death now luka is scared of uh, popoa being made shot by smirno because now popoa doesn't know absolutely how to face such a situation even though she is showing her determination and agreeing with whatever this man was saying and luka knows the real position of her she is totally unaware of how to touch a pistol even so so she is saying don't shoot her you know now you want to shoot her how ridiculous is no 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 he like as if not hearing him if she fights well, that's equality of rights emancipation and all that here the sex is equal i shoot down the principal but what to women this is the first instance that that smell no changes his idea the idea suddenly changes into romanticism here he is mono is totally bargaining he totally hated me for poa and uh, he really wanted to shoot her down and uh, and uh, he really wanted uh, her to maybe get rid of her after paying the money but now he is having a rather loving attitude towards for uh, poa and uh, because she agreed to him because she is not scared she is determined uh, she agreed to what he said just now and uh, but you know he says wow what a woman i never met her one like her in my life before in my life they will take you i'll put the bullet in the thick head how she reacted now he is imagining how she accepted it and, uh, and the, the way she i mean said that she will put the bullet into your into his thick head now she didn't how her cheek so she accepted my feelings he she accepted my challenge that's the very reason that he turns la turns into love with the me popoa and my word is the first time in my life i have seen one like her like she is now getting he is getting like rather in love with popoa so luka says go away sir i'll always pray god for you this man who says she is a woman <laughs> that's really funny she is a woman we know that that's the sort i can understand a real woman not a sour faced jelly bear that's also rather funny she is a real woman real woman uh not a sour faced jelly bear <laughs> these words are fun jelly bear uh, but fire gunpowder <laughs> powder a rocket a rocket i'm even sorry to have killed her <laughs> i'm even uh, sorry to have killed her that pro- that promotes the element of sarcasm uh, this uh, now 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 she he understands that may she is not the kind of a normal women in general 
she is a woman that's the sort i can understand her real woman not a sour face jelly bag but fire gunpowder a rocker i'm even sorry to have killed her <laughs> and luca weeps dear dear sir do go away this is enough this man says i absolutely like her now this is the statement that proves that uh, ismano is not going to shoot popua now he is in love with her so even though her cheeks dimpled i like her even though the cheeks and now he hated the dimple now he said they are insincere cruel black bitters envious liars and now he says even though the dimples are there i like her i'm almost ready to let the dead go that's really funny he is even going to leave the dead of this whole conflict right due to a dead i am even even ready to let the dead go you may take my state bank i i am in the middle of an affair <laughs> then then uh, wonderful women i am not angry anymore now how come anger come he is turning into love he has now a loving attitude towards her wonderful woman then uh, popo enters popo doesn't hear these stuff and she brings the pistol now he said all these things were the time when popo went to bring the pistols to the cupboard then uh, popo says here are the pistols but before we fight you must show me how to fire how to fire <laughs> and i never held a pistol in my life before even though my husband used them i i'm totally unaware of using a pistol then luca says no luca the servant feels really he is scared now oh lord have mercy and save her i'll go and find the coachman and the gunner why has this infliction come upon us and luca is now look at this that this is going to be then this um, this my my master my madam this is no how to shot and she is going to ask the ask me i asked to like learn she is going to learn to fire the gun from her enemy and uh, that's really sarcastic and uh, that's also element that creates sarcasm which means uh, before you fight you must show me show me how to fight from the enemy is sarcastic and uh, and uh, i have never held a pistol in my hands before the luca says okay why has this inflection come upon us today this man no says examine the you know okay this man no gets the pistols and he examines the pistols you see there is now he is going to give a huge introduction about the pistols itself to popoana you see there are several sorts of pistols there are more time more time pistols especially made for duels they fire like a percussion cap there are smith and wesson revolvers triple action with extractors there are excellent pistols you they can cost less than night robbers the pair you must hold the revolver like this now during this test when he shows how to fire the gun now the assign he he says her eyes her eyes what an inspiring woman and he poses like this now and now he is totally mad now smaro says yes like this then you cock the trigger take the aim like this put your head back a little hold your arm out properly like that then you press this thing with your finger and that's so the great thing is to keep cool and aim steadily not to jerk you up so it's really funny like uh, this man is holding a hand and teaching her how to hold the pistol and the romance begins with smirno now so try not to jerk jerk your arm the popua says very well uh, popua is angry it's inconvenient to shoot inside the room let's go out into the garden then smirno says come along then but i warn you i am going to fire in the air and this man says she is he's going to fire in the air not to the popua then popua says but that's the last straw why is that then smino says because because it's my affair then popua says are you afraid yes uh are you afraid na huh? no sir you don't get out of this you come with me i shan't have any pain until i made the hole in your forehead that forehead which i hate so so much are you afraid Yes, I am afraid. Now, Papa, this man also says, "Yes, I am afraid." He is lying now. He is a he is a artillery man, a landowner, and everything. He has got the gun, gun, gun skills. And um, and he, then Papa says, "You lie. Why won't you fight?" By the way, this man says, "Because because I like you." Then Papa laughs loudly. <laughs> he likes me. How dare to say? How dare to say? 
something if he dares to say that he likes me then that's the way she points the door and to go out then uh, then then listen are you still lying to this man or says now he want to like disrupt this thing he doesn't want to shoot anymore but popo wants that he she thinks that he's joking at her then that would lying to her that they she she loves him he loves her and like that but uh, but are you still angry uh, i am devilishly annoyed too but do you understand how can i express myself the fact is you see it's like this so to speak now he's unable to express what he is what he is uh, having in his mind now well it's my fault that i like you they will take it how am i how am i smashing up your furniture i like you do you understand i almost love you the purpose is get away from me i hate you after all this then why are you coming like this then then it's my god what the women and she he thinks that she'll so pardon him and like that but she doesn't pardon go get out of my way now why are you coming again i like ask in for love and then uh, i've never seen in my life one like her i'm almost i'm lost done for fallen into a mouse trap like a mouse then fallen into a mouse trap like a mouse fallen into a mouse trap like a mouse Fallen into a mouse trap like a mouse. And here, uh, the purpose says, "Stand back! I'll fire! I'm going to fire now! Stand back!" <laughs> now, now Ismano is in a very uh, tragic situation. Ismano says, "Fire then! You can't understand what happiness it would be to die before those beautiful lies to be shot by a revolver held in that little velvet hand." <laughs> It's really funny. I, I, I'm out of my senses. think and make up your mind at once because if i go out we shall never see each other again decide now i am a land owner respectable character have an income of 10000 a year and i can put a bullet through a coin tossed into the thin air as it comes down i own some fine horses will you be my wife hope my indigent shakes a revolver let's fight i uh, let's fight let's go out now she won't she won't interrupt this she doesn't want then Smano says, "I am mad. I understand nothing." Then, uh, see, he again he shouts out, "Wait, uh, water!" Then Popua shouts, "Let's go and fight." Popua wants to fight now. Smano says, "I am off my head. I am in love like a boy, like a fool. Like uh, I love you now. This is real. Like the scene. I love you as I have never loved before. I refused to a woman, and nine have refused me. And I love you. I am weak. I am wet. I am melted. I am on my knees like a fool, offering you my hand. Shame, shame. I haven't been in love for five years, and I take a vow. And all of a sudden, I am in love like a fish out of water. In love like a like a fish." Out of what? All of a sudden, he had made the vow already to not to, uh, not to, not to love anymore. But now, all of a sudden, he is in love like a fish out of water. I offer you my hand. Yes or no? Do you want me? Very well. Papa says. Now he then this man says, "You don't want me, no? Okay, I'll go now. I'll go." Then Papa says, "Stop." Her mind suddenly changes now. Her fatherly turns into infatuation. Her faith turns into unfaithfulness. Her, uh, yeah, unfaithfulness. And uh, she says, "Stop, stop, stop." This man says, "Well." Then Papa says, "Nothing. Go away. No stop. No go away. Go away. I hate you. Oh no, don't go away. If you knew, if you knew how angry I am, how angry I am, my fingers are swollen all because of this. Why? What are you waiting for? Get out." This man says goodbye. Yes, yes, yes. Go away, go away. Where are you going? Stop. No, go away. Oh, how angry I am! Don't come near me. Don't come near me. Then, this <laughs> man approaches her. I'm in love like a student. I've been on my knees. I love you. And uh, why do I want to fall in love with you for? Tomorrow I've got to pay that interest and begin moving. And here you, I shall never forgive myself for this. Then, <laughs> get away from me. Then. Then uh, he comes near Popo and and uh, hugs her. Then Popo, Popo. Then all of a sudden, Luca, uh, Lu, she shouts out, "Luca, tell them in the stables that Toby isn't to have any horse for today or at all today." Earlier she said, "Give some extra horse because now fidelity turned into infidelity." We know that every person the attitude changes because one reason is that person gets fed up of something doing 
something been done consecutively for a long period of time for a long time period so after some time a person's vicious attitudes changes along with time so now the change is that as lucas said what's the point of my life this such a life of mine when i grow old what's the point i i have no chance to go out and have fun and like that so now what she says why she changes the attitude now if i if the time this is the right time for me to have a change in my life so my husband has died and so i can have another life then then uh, the 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 luca comes uh, with the other gardeners and everything with revolvers to uh, make this into a a stable condition now because the huge conflict was going on luca somehow got out of the the faintness and everything illness and she had gone out but had brought me dasha palange and everyone who was in the garden and little father when they see each other holding look i tell them in this table and and uh, everyone is me shocked now what what is this luca said that there was a big fight going on and what they see afterwards is really funny it's the opposite of that <laughs> so thank you everybody for listening to me uh, this drama yeah